Here with Hall of Famer Shaquille O'Neal. Shaq is joining us on behalf of Home Depot. He's going to talk to us a little bit about that later. But first off, Shaq, I'm very curious because you are in this very special room of big man that hardly anybody else can go into. It's like uh, you say G14 classification. I'm curious what you would think about Nikola Jokic if he wins another championship this season with the MVPs that he already has. Does that put him in the room with you? First of all, you're sadly mistaken. I'm not in the room. I am the president of the Big Man Alliance. And until somebody wins four championships or three MVPs, I cannot be removed. First of all. Second of all, yes, he's already in the room. And uh, if he gets another championship, he'll just get more access and he'll just be closer to dethroning the president. But uh, best big man in the league uh, plays the right way. Everything he does is the right way. Like he he, he makes the right pass. He makes the right play. Uh, you know, a great leader on the court. Joel Embiid is, is, is behind him. But in this world we live in, you don't get certain access until you win. Like you don't get the access to to do media until you you know take the certain courses and you get the qualifications. I know we got podcasts and all these things going on, but unless they have those certain qualifications, I don't really really count them. But love Joker, love the way he's playing. Now Joker and Giannis, they both have two MVPs, regular season MVPs, and two and one Finals MVP, one championship. Do you think? One this year, this year that one of those guys will break the tie. Do you think Milwaukee or Denver will wind up on top? That's who. That's who I would like to see in the finals. Definitely, who I would like to see in the finals. You know, good thing about sports and competition is just so many questions, and so many things you you wish you could answer right now, but we just got to wait. Uh, Milwaukee's definitely starting to pick it up. Denver's in in a position they could be number four, they could be number two. But, you know, they definitely have the blueprint on how to win a championship. And I could tell they want to win another one. So uh, Clippers are coming. Phoenix is coming. Got to love um, uh, NBA sports. Well, Shaq, you reached a point you after you won your first MVP. It's argued that you should have won two or three more. And Giannis is in a spot where he's won two MVPs. And people don't talk about him being an MVP player. Speaking from experience, does that bother you when you've won an MVP and you feel like your numbers and the team success is there? Are you surprised what, that Giannis's name isn't thrown out there like Jokic and like SGA? What bothers me is what is the criteria for becoming a most valuable player of the NBA, a singular entity player? You know, some of these rule makers base it on team success, and that's okay, but you mean to tell me Minnesota and Anthony Edwards is a great player, but you you telling me right now he's better than a Joker? He's he's playing better than Luca, just because their team has a better record. So I I don't really know the criteria anymore of a most valuable player. Like when I was doing all my stuff in the league, I can a most valuable player be a guy that was just passing everybody else, you know, a guy that I lost to twice. So I don't really understand the criteria. You know, when you, if you're not a, a really a, a sports aficionado like we are, when it says, when you say most valuable player, I would think you would have this, the baddest guy in the league. I think if they're going to focus on winning, your team has to be one through eight. Like, uh, so you mean to tell me if Minnesota finishes better than than Denver by, by, by one game? You got to give it to Anthony Edwards because his, his you know record was better. So I don't really like I said I don't really understand the criteria of what a most valuable player is. It what you do as a player or is it what your team does? I think it's supposed to be a combination of both, but there's been some inconsistencies through the years and historically exactly. on every year the criteria sort of changes. Exactly. So it, it, speaking of going back into the wayback machine, Shaq, I don't know if you've seen this, but there's a segment of social media that is trying to discredit everything that's been done in the 90s and the 2000s. I saw I you saw, saw that? that? Yeah. We're done with the 90s. They're trying to show Michael Jordan doesn't have a left hand and Magic Johnson didn't know what he was it's doing. Shaq, what, what, do you, what do you make of that besides laughing? I, what do you make of that? It's cute, but it's natural. And let me tell you about it's natural. They always compare me to Will Chamberlain. I'm looking at his 70s highlights like, I would have killed this guy. So it's just, you know, normal stuff. Like the stuff that we see in 2024 is way more advanced than the stuff we see in the 90s. So if you're a 
guys, especially on social media, and all you see is the 2024, 2024, 2024, and then you see 1990, you're definitely not going to be impressed by the 1990. But when I came in 1990, I wasn't impressed by Bill Russell, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, or Will Chamberlain footage. They only had one or two moves. Nobody was banging them under the rim. And nobody act like they wanted to fight them. So for me, being being you know doing exactly what this generation is doing, I said the same thing about the sixties, the seventies, and the eighties. So it's cute, I understand it, but it's just it's life. You know, it's just a phase. You know, you know, phase of what we grow through. And they actually you know make some good points because like I don't really have a lot of nineties memories now. All my memories are like Steph Curry and Ann Edwards. And, you know what these guys are doing now. So. Shaq, I, I remember we, no, I remember when you first came in the league, how much of an athletic marvel you were. And I remember you when you got to the Lakers and you refined your game. I don't think there's anybody in today's game that could physically match up with you, not even Embiid. Oh, and you know what? And they know that too. That's why they don't really mess with me. You know, they always try to say, oh, well, you got to guard the three-point line. No, I wasn't known for defense. You got to guard me. You got to guard me. So, like, you know, Joker can sit out there and shoot threes all they want. As soon as he's shooting, I'm going to run by him and stand in that lane 10 seconds and make the rough call three seconds. Well, they're going to be complaining, oh, three seconds, three seconds. They're not going to be able to move me. So, you make the three, I'm running by you. You miss the three, I'm running by you. So, you, you can shoot the three all you want, but you're not going to hit as many threes as I'm going to hit twos. Impossible. Well, and the last thing before we get to your Home Depot promotion, what big man, whether it be from the past before you played or even now, if you could put a 27-year-old Shaquille O'Neal who dominated the NBA, MVP, should have been defensive player of the year, you put that player in, who would you want to be play paired against? What big man? It could be Bill Russell. It could be Will. It could be uh, Jokic. Yeah. It could be Embiid. Brooks. No, like those guys, I've, I've, I've actually seen Embiid. He's a king. I've seen Jokic, Vladi, in the European center. Never seen anybody like myself. And so, you know, like uh, Will Chamberlain. Like, I, I wanted to pass him up in points because I was going to arrogantly say I'm the most dominant player ever. I don't want to hear no names. I got more championships. I got, you know, uh, more finals MVPs. I got more points. I don't want to hear anybody else's name until they surpass me and do what I did. But because Will still has more points than me, I guess I got to be quiet. That's true. Well, look. In my book, Shaq, you are, there ain't nobody that, that's more dominant than you. And Thank now you. that you're doing you're doing a Home Depot March Madness promotion, tell us a little bit about that. Well, let me say I'm really excited about the Home Depot, you know, to help bring the sponsorship of NCAA's March Madness to life. I've been a Home Depot guy forever, damn near a long time. I'm a big Home Depot guy in, in, in my city of McDonough, I want to say store 157. You know, I know I can always count on those people. This is my first time not living like a spoiled brat. So I have a regular house amongst the people, but it was kind of an old fixer-upper, 30-acre farm. So I was at Home Depot a lot, and they, they, they helped me, and they helped me with all my D, DIY projects. So, you know, you know, when I decided to partner up with them, I, I said, you know, we got to make a campaign that's fun. So, you know, we decided to, you know, Pair basketball terminology and Home Depot terminology. You know things that make sense, like cleaning the glass, you know, uh, seating the bracket, you know, things like that. And yeah. the series, and, and the series is called Tips from the Tool Shack. So we made all the commercials cute, and you know, during the, during uh, March Madness, when you're being excited from the game, this will take you off for a second and you know get you out your worry spot and make you laugh. But it it uh, you know definitely makes sense. Shaq, you are the king of making promotions fun and funny. Really appreciate you joining us on behalf of Home right. Depot today, man. Thanks again, big. Thank you, brother.